Yes, you certainly did your homework for this interview. I'm impressed. I was so surprised when I got a call to do an interview for Georgia. Greg Gorman is American famous photographer, best known for his timeless black and white portraits. Greg documents that peculiar obsession of the 20th century celebrity. His stark, honest portraits of the most famous and infamous faces from the worlds of entertainment, art, sport, and music reveal a picture of human nature in infinite range. Each portrait is also a testament to the individual character of his subject. With more than 50 years in industry, he has gathered many stories and photos which was published in the book It's Not About Me. In the book, we also see some of photos which was not shown before, for example, photos of Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was fantastic. You know, I feel sorry for how everything kind of went down with him because he was a very special person. I loved him very much. He was fantastic to work with. Whenever I had a shoot with Michael, um, basically, he would call me maybe two weeks before the shoot and we would uh, discuss the photo session. It was almost like working with an art director. For The picture of him in the dance clothes was an interesting picture because he said to me, you know, I love your nudes that you've done of your male and female nudes. I want to do something in that vein, but obviously something tasteful that was not, you know, crazy. And my stylist had the idea of dressing him in dance clothes that were kind of ripped. And that, so that's what Michael, Michael was always a pleasure to work with. He never came with a big entourage. He worked long hours. He was very dedicated to all of his professions. And that's why he was so successful and so talented in so many areas. Greg Gorman has decided to become a photographer after he attended and photographed concert of Jimi Hendrix. For the occasion, Greg has borrowed camera from friend, and after he went to print his photographs, he already knew that he wanted to be a photographer. In interview with us, Greg has said that in interview with us, Greg has said that working with Interview Magazine was very special for him. One of his most recognizable portraits is also includes a photo of interview magazine founder and artist Andy Warhol. Cover and honestly, uh, Interview Magazine is a big part of what helped establish me as a photographer in the early days. If you look at the photographers working in interview in the early 80s, um, most of those big name photographers that were relatively undiscovered at that time became fairly established artists, which so I, I feel very uh, uh, indebted to Interview Magazine for helping launch my career. I also at the same time started shooting an advertising campaign for a little eyeglass company on Melrose Avenue in Hollywood, a small little company named LA Eyeworks. And every month they would run a portrait of a celebrity in, the ma in Andy World's Interview Magazine with the copy line, every face is like a work of art, it deserves a great frame. And then in the mid 80s, late 80s, 86, somewhere around there, Andy called me, who I knew, and said, asked me if he could be in an LA Iwerks ad. He had just signed a deal with Ford Models and wanted to be in an ad. So I said, you know, sure, that'd be great. And he came out to my home in LA and we shot the picture. And later that picture went on to become my most noted image. Um, it seems like artist photographs are more uh, recognizable and appreciated than just, you know, celebrities. And that's funny how a commercial job led to becoming my most famous image. Greg Gorman's incredible career includes also work for movies. Gorman has photographed many famous and iconic movie posters, which include Scarface, Crybaby, Pirates of the Caribbean, Pearl Harbor, Meet Joe Black, and many, many well-known movies. But for now, we will discuss the movie Tutsi. I, I got Andy to be I got Andy to be in Tootsie. There was a, a a day where Sidney Pollack, the director, uh, promised Dustin that he could have a day where he became famous or did whatever he wanted for the motion picture. And Dustin said, "I want to do a photo shoot with Greg and a bunch of famous people." And Dustin said to me, "Greg, who do you know that's famous that could come down and be in a scene with me in the movie?" And so my first instinct was to call David Bowie because I was working with David Bowie that weekend. And, Dave, and I asked David if he wanted to come down and be in the movie uh, with, that, with Dustin Hoffman. And he said he'd love to, but he was getting his highlights done and couldn't come down. 
And we were shooting in a loft near the factory where Andy's office was. And so I called Andy up and Andy came over. And that the reason Andy's in Tootsie is because of me. I called him and asked him to be in the movie. You have photographed so many intimate moments of celebrities, and one of them includes Keanu Reeves and his photos. And like all these photos which you have taken of him, it looks so different and like very different what we have seen of Keanu. We began the shoot, it was for Detour magazine, in a loft in downtown L.A. And I, I rented this beautiful old loft. And I was watching Keanu and I was watching his body language, and he didn't seem super comfortable. And I said to him, I said, Keanu, what's going on? I said, you don't seem like you're totally feeling the moment. And he goes, yeah. I said, what do you want? What would you like to do? He says, well, I really would rather go ride my motorcycle out in Malibu. So in the middle of all of this, we packed everything up in the motorhome and we went out to Malibu and we followed him out on his motorcycle. And it's often the case, you know, the actors have to change clothes on the set. And so, you know, I took my camera and I set it down because obviously I wouldn't shoot this. And Keanu yelled, yelled across the way, he says, Greg, you can shoot this, shoot it. And I just happened to take that picture. So afterwards, I knew I had some fun pictures, but I knew that if I showed them to his publicist, they would have been killed, would have been finished. So I called Keanu up and I said, Keanu, come over to the come up to my house. I want to show you these pictures. They're pretty cool. And he came over and he says, I love them, Greg, use them. One of your favorites from your photography includes photos of Leonardo DiCaprio. Tell us the story. Well, that's an, it, there's an interesting story that actually has a little bit to do with my style of photography and how I shoot. Um, I was very lucky to work with Leonardo for the first dozen years of his life, and we shot many, many uh, pictures together over the course of time. And Leo, in the early days, before he became you know, hugely successful and famous, loved to just go out and play and make pictures. And he was someone that was very, very comfortable in front of a still camera. Many actors are far more comfortable playing a character other than themselves. And when they have to shed that character bare and they have to figure out who they are, they become more nervous. And Leo was exactly the opposite. He was wonderful. And a lot of times when I'm shooting a celebrity or a per any, any person, I start in very close, kind of like the images you see of you and myself on the screen, because it, it basically breaks down the barriers and there's a level of intimacy being so close. It also gives the photographer, my, like myself, the chance to figure out what I want to play up in the highlights, play down in the shadows. Let's me look at what your flaws are and what your, your better side of your face is or the better angles. And that way, when I pull the camera back, um, it gives me the opportunity of knowing how to best photograph that person. Now, Greg Gorman is mostly busy lecturing and working on personal projects. After the photographer discovered his own unique style, he started adding photos of the body and shapes to his portraits. During the pandemic, he found a new hobby, and it turned out to be photographing the voodoo dolls in his collection. The photographer recently released a new book with friend and creative director Gary Johnson. Now, my latest book is a book on African art and how African uh, art uh, influences European and American culture. So I've done a book of still life, which I'd never done before, working with my creative director, Gary Johns. Um, so the African art came about during COVID. So I've been collecting uh, voodoo and fetish dolls and ma African masks since the se early 70s. So I had a fair collection. I wouldn't say a massive collection, but a decent collection. And I, I thought, all right, I always preached, you know, to step outside your comfort zone and don't be afraid of falling on your face and i always joked that i would never shoot anything that couldn't talk back to me so i started photographing these and i had to learn how to do it because i honest frankly i didn't know so i i talked to my creative director gary johns who'd been my art director on most of my projects and i said gary he shot um graffiti and street art and items and decay he did scanning and illustration and collage i said what if you take um uh, my dolls my african figures and bury them in the middle of your, your artwork. And he said, Greg, I think your pictures look great. Why would you want to do that? I said, just try it. And so he did, and they were fabulous. <laughs> they came out really great. I'm anxious to see what you think of them. Thank you, Greg, for doing this interview. It was a great honor to talk to you about your amazing career and life. Okay, thank you so much for your time. I'm very pleased to have met you and then done the interview. Okay, bye now.